Hello, this is Robert with Beyond 20. Sharewell Web Services, or CWS, is one of the API connections available for web-based interactions within Sharewell. Today we're working in Sharewell version 5. If you're looking for more information on creating a web service, such as for integration within SharePoint, uh, refer to our other videos, and we have some of those on our YouTube channel that kind of describe that type of integration. However, today's demonstration is going to show various aspects of Sharewell Web Services through the API. So to get started, the first thing that you want to do is go to the actual API address. And you'll see up here, I have this in my browser. If you want to pause and jot this down real quick, you could do so. It's just going to be api.asmx. Here we have a list of all the different operations that are available on the Sharewell Web Services API. Uh, the first thing we have to do is actually log in. Um, so if we scroll down, we'll see there's a login option. I'm going to open that up in a new window just so we can revert back to the previous, uh, previous tab. And this is just going to be a Sharewell user, uh, user ID and password. So in this case, this is on the out-of-box demo database. That's going to be the CSD admin account. And you can use any account to access the API. It's not actually restricted. Um, if you store the, or if you create a separate security group, you'll be able to restrict access to certain business objects. Uh, so if you have to run web services on another server and you don't want someone to have your CSD admin account, you could set up a separate user just for the API and restrict what access they can have based on the security group. So through the browser, we're just going to go ahead and run this command here. And you'll see that it automatically logs us in right on the fly. And we get a response back from Sharewell saying that our login was true. If we were to go back and enter the wrong password, it would also respond back and let us know that that password did not work. So let's go ahead and just log in. All right, so we're successfully logged in because we have that true message come back. Close all these extras. Now let's take a look, and let's say we want to grab the customer record uh, for Henry Bryce, and he's on the customer internal uh, business object. If we go fire up the blue planet here, we can see Henry Bryce, um, but we might not actually have his record ID handy. And so we want to grab his record ID um, by doing a search or a query uh, based on the field value of the full name being Henry Bryce. So let's demonstrate that real quick here. Under the available commands, we want to query by field value. This allows us to specify a business object, the name of the field, and the value that we're trying to find. So in this case, Henry Bryce is going to be part of the customer internal table. And it's the full name field. And we're going to put Henry Bryce in here for the value. And this is going to search for all customer internal records with the person's name being Henry Bryce. And in this case, we only have one in this database. However, it may turn more results. Uh, so once we're ready, go ahead and click on Invoke. And you'll see the response comes back pretty much instantaneously. It uh, gives us all of the records. In this case, we just have one record. But if there were multiple records available, it would, it would display those for us. It also gives us some more information about the business object. Uh, it gives us the object name as well as the internal rec ID for that object. Uh, so now that we have Henry Bryce's record here, we can copy his rec ID and pull up his entire business object profile. So if we go back to the available options and let's do get business object. And this is going to be the customer internal business object. And we're going to paste Henry's rec ID in here. And now what we should receive is a list of all the field values for his entire object. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on Invoke. And now we can see the actual data that's stored inside Sharewell's database. We have Henry's email address in here. 
This gives us the internal ID of that field as well as the name of the field, uh, its first name, last name. It also gives us all the different relationships uh, so if there's anything we had to do on those relationships, as we can see, we have some incidents that Henry's related to. We can see the rec ID of the incident on here and maybe perform some other actions after uh, we have this, this information. And that's a, basically a quick overview of the Web Services API. I also would like to run through SOAP UI, uh, but we'll save that for another video. So I'll post a link to that at the bottom um, of YouTube so you can take a look at the next uh, next chapter here. So thanks for watching. And once again, this was Robert with Beyond 20. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more ShareWell tips and tricks.